गुड मॉर्निंग क्लास टुडे आई विल बी टेकिंग एज यू सी टुडे विल टेकिंग अबाउट द एपिडेमोलॉजी ऑफ साइकेट्रिक ओके तो कमिंग टू द फर्स्ट स्लाइड व्हाट इज एपिडेमोलॉजी एपिडेमोलॉजी इज कॉन्सर्न विथ अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड कॉन्ट्रोलिंग डिजीज एपिडेमिक्स बाय इन्वेस्टिगेटिंग एम्पेरिकली द एसोसिएशन बिटवीन एजेंट होस्ट एंड एनवायरमेंट देर आर थ्री फैक्टर्स लाइक एजेंट एनवायरमेंट एंड होस्ट these three are important for the epidemiology of any disease like in covid right now what about psychiatric epidemiology psychiatric epidemiology lags behind than other branches of epidemiology due to difficulties encountering in conceptualizing difficulty in diagnosing difficulty in defining a case difficulty in sampling difficulty in selecting an instrument lack of resources and social stigma The epidemiological research in uh, India is done by the Indian Psychiatric Association. Journey started six decades ago in the year 1950 to 1960. The 1950 to 1960, first psychiatric epidemiological study was done by 1961 in Agra by Dr. C. K. Dubey. The development of PA PSC was done. The development of Indian Psychiatric Survey Schedule (IPSS). was developed in the year 1960 initial epidemic studies in india where prevalence of psychiatric disorders were found out where 9.5 to 370 per 1000 population had been found to be suffering from psychiatric problem but there was a limitation by the wide variety in the prevalence rate in the landmark of international epidemic study was done epidemiological catchment area program and national comorbidity survey what well, ipos which is known as international pilot study of schizophrenia it was conducted by who it was conducted over the over nine countries five developed and four developing countries in the indian center was agra the aim of the study was to feasibility in conducting a few study as it was done was baseline was 2 and 5 years drop out at 5 years was 24% and the conclusion was outcome of schizophrenia better in developing countries than developed countries in dos me determinants of outcome of severity of mental disorder it was conducted by who the 12 centers in 10 countries indian centers were again agra and chandigarh aim was prevalence of schizophrenia and outcome follow was done after 2 years Where eighty percent, twenty percent were dropouts, eighty percent was done. Conclusion: Developing countries had better outcome. Indian population less time spent in psychotic episode and less impairment of social functioning, which is a good news for Indians. What is ICMR? Con ICMR is conduct in centers in Bellur, Madras, and Lucknow. The course and outcome of F20. F20 is an ICD coding of schizophrenia. It is modified criteria was schizophrenia used. Duration was three months instead of six months, and follow-up period was two years. While follow-up rate in Madras was eighty-six percent, Lucknow eighty-five percent, Bellur seventy-six percent, and the conclusion was best pattern of course in forty-eight percent, worst pattern ten percent, and common the findings of IPBS and DOSMED studies. National Mental Health Survey survey MNHS is the largest national wide survey on mental health in India funded by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare Government of India conducted in 12 states of the country national coordinating center was in Bangalore in Nimhans the objective of the of this survey is to estimate the burden of mental health problems identify the gap in human resources and services for mental health in the country the tools used were mini 6.0 mini kit 6.0 tools used questionnaire for tobacco epilepsy autism and intellectual disability which earlier used to be known as mental retardation right now it's called as intellectual disability the question about disability hds health in behavior and cost of treatment was also taken into consideration any mental disorder in india was found to be a percentage of 10.6% of 
Out of that, F10 to F90, these are all the ICD coding, which I will teach you later on. In the mental and behavioral disorders due to psych psychoactive substance use was found to be 5% of the whole Indian scenario, excluding tobacco, obviously. F10, alcohol use disorder was 4.6% out, out of 5%. Tobacco use disorder was 13.1%, which, which more than double the total psychoactive substance use disorders. The other substance use disorder was 0.6%. While schizophrenia and other psychotic disorders were 0.4%, mood, affective disorders were 2.5%, bipolar affective disorder, bipolar mood disorder, which consists of mania and depression, it was 0.3%. Right now, depression has been in DSM-5. I will tell you one thing. According to the criteria, we have two international criteria. One is DSM and one is ICD. ICD, international code, coding of diagnosis. It is done by England and the European countries, while DSM is done by America. So basically, all American authors or American psychiatrists follow DSM, while India and other European countries follow ICD. But the books have both DSM and ICD. We have a special book on ICD, which you'll get to know later on. In DSM-5, which is the latest DSM, uh, DSM criteria which, has in, which go, was introduced in May 2013. Here they had had, had a separate condition which is known as depressive disorder. Earlier it was clubbed with mania and was called under bipolar mood disorder. Right now they have been, they are saying that depression alone can be a diagnosis and alone can be there in any patient. That's why here in depression there were 2.7% among the general population. While neurotic stress related disorder was 3.5%, phobic anxiety disorder was 1.9%, other anxiety disorder was 1.2%, OCD in Bengal, which we call Suchi Bai, was 0.8%, while PTSD, post traumatic stress disorder, was 0.2%, while suicidal tendency, while suicidal risk was 0.9% among all the mental disorder, all the population of India. NMS 2. 2015 and 2016 data, which is the latest data which they have produced in the year 2016. The prevalence of mental disorder in percentage of mental mor morbidity in lifetime was 15.1%. Mental disorder current, they were 11.8%. Out of that, schizophrenia and other psychotic disorder were 1.3% among the general population. Neurotic and stress related disorder was 4.9%. Any substance use disorder was 15.7%. Alcohol use disorder was 3%, tobacco was 14.3%. As you know, the Indians and the West Bengal, in Bengalis, they love to smoke. You have, you have found, you'll find that. Other substance use disorder were 0.8%, mood was 4.8%, and suicidal risk was 5.3%, which is much, much higher than other, than the total Indian population. You see, 5.3%, well, Earlier, you say it's 0.9% social risk. But the prevalence of common and severe mental disorder, the mental morbidity in total are 10.6%, while common mental disorder out of that is only 10%, but severe mental disorder is 0.8%, which is good, which is less, but still a huge amount of patients have suffered morbidity and mortality because of that. The prevalence of psychoactive substance use, other substance use was 0.1% in male, females, while in males they were 1.1%. Alcohol use disorder in females was 0.5%, while in males it was 9.1%. Tobacco in females was 9.8%, while in males it is 38.2%. 38.2% males were suffering from tobacco use disorder. In tobacco so disorder, again, you see 20.9% in VP, male and female combined, while alcohol is 4.6, while other substance use disorder was 0.6%, which is much less. Previous of mental disorder, percentage in adolescence, total is 7.3%, male, out of that male is 7.5%, female is 7.1%, rural 6.9%, urban 4.3%, while in urban metro is 13.5%. 
In analysis, overall prevalence of mental health morbidity was 7.3%, common mental disorder, disorders were 5.4%, severe mental disorders were 1.4%, autism was 1.6%, and CD, ODD, and ADHD were 0.8%. While prevalence of mental disorder in, in different states, like in Assam, it's 5.8 percent, UP, the 6.1 percent, Gujarat, 7.8 percent. This study was done on 12 states. So, Rajasthan, it was 10.1 percent, Jharkhand, 11.1 percent, Kerala, 11.4 percent. This is Chhattisgarh, no, city, I think, is Chhattisgarh, maybe, or 11.7 percent, Tamil Nadu, 11.8 percent, West Bengal, 13 percent. Punjab 30.4%, Madhya Pradesh was 30.9%, while Manipur was 14.1%. The prevalence of epilepsy and intellectual disability. And in images, epilepsy and intellectual disability was identified using the screener instrument. The prevalence of epilepsy or GTCS, there are lots of types of epilepsy, but both the most common is general tonic tonic seizures was 0.3 percent with nearly 2 million persons requiring care, 2 million in India alone. The prevalence of intellectual disability was 0.6 percent in the survived population resulting in nearly 4 million people requiring care. The treatment gap, now we should come to a very important thing, is a treatment gap for different mental disorder. In bipolar mood disorder we have found that 70 percent percent almost of the patient of bipolar have a treatment gap which obviously causes prolonged treatment and maybe lifelong treatment and less bad, worse prognosis of the patient. In psychotic disorder is 75.5 percent while major depressive disorder is 85.2 percent while in neurosis is 83.2 percent and alcohol disorder is 86.3 percent. Treatment gap for different mental disorder continued will be fine. Excess substance use is 84.5 percent, while common mental disorder is 85 percent. Severe mental disorder is 73.6 percent, while substance use disorder is 91 percent. Alcohol is 86.3 percent. You should know that alcohol has, and more than alcohol, tobacco. Tobacco is because it is easily available, and that's why people have been smoking a lot and alcohol is costlier maybe if alcohol the price if the tax get decreased the alcohol rate might also increase as equal to tobacco the other substances are 72.9 percent while epilepsy is 31.3 percent and intellectual deficiency is 70.5 percent their treatment gap because in intellectual deficiency you should understand the child will be needing a lifelong treatment and it's a very cumbersome, cumbersome, and with with no chance of the of the child actually coming back to our, our, our being a normal person, because most of the time we we divide intellectual deficiency under four criteria: mild, moderate, severe, and and profound. In mild and moderate, they they can lead a normal life, but in severe and profound, they cannot. Even after major, because we cannot increase the IQ per, IQ of any person. There is no medicine which has been developed which will increase the IQ of any, any human being or any animal for that matter. Mental health specialist human issues in NMH state per lack population. Psychiatrists, clinical psychiatrists and psychiatric social workers, they are the three types of basically health workers working under psychiatry. In Assam, it was found it is over around 0.3% psychiatrists are there um, per lack population. In Chhattisgarh, which is less is around less than 0.2 percent. Gujarat is really better 0.5 percent. Kerala tops the chart with 1.2 percent. MP has the worst and the lowest amount of psychiatric health workers like psychiatrist, clinical psychologist and psychological social workers. Which is around 0.1 percent, less than even 0.1 percent. In Manipur, even though the prevalence is the maximum we have found, the psychiatry, the number of psychiatry are 0.5 percent per lakh population. Punjab, where you have seen Uttar Punjab, there are a lot of addictions in Punjab. 
So they are my own colleague, they have here, they, two of them have opened rehabs and they are still not able to come, overcome their huge addiction to the general population in Punjab. Is there the cycle is at 0.5%, Rajasthan is 1.1%, Tamil Nadu is around 0.3%, UP 0.1% and West Bengal is one of the leading, which is 0.6% of psychiatrists. So there's a huge gap here, which need to be fulfilled, and maybe because of lack of general, of the psychiatrist and the clinical psychologist to guide people, they, it, but the thing is that psychiatry will always remain a social stigma. My HOD had, when I had joined post-graduation in 2011, my HOD has told me, when he had told me his story that when he was to enter into MD, which was in the year 1974-1975, he wanted to do MD medicine, people told him don't do MD medicine, better do psychiatry because psychiatry is a very upcoming branch. My HOD told me, this is, I'm going to retire, retire in a year or two, but still psychiatry is an upcoming batch. It will never, it has never reached the pinnacle because, mainly because of the social stigma. Psychiatrists have always, always been known as Pagal ke doctor and psychiatric patients are known as Pagal, which is wrong. As you can see, there are many, many different psychiatric problems like OCD, depression, like manic, schizophrenia, which we call Pagal, there is their addictions, their, their PTSD, there are so many anxiety, their neurosis, which fall, all fall on a psychiatry. So as you budding doctors, you should come out of the stigma and you should give more attention and more care to the psychiatric patients because they are craving to lead a normal life and they need help. As you have seen in the latest thing, an, a well-known Bollywood actor had committed suicide and apparently he was undergoing treatment for depression and his psychiatry or psychologist as usual, which is good, he had not revealed the case study because of doctor-patient relationship which is maintained. So you understand depression and this suicidal tendency and impulsive suicidal ideation don't only stop at poverty, it can affect anybody. It's time we in the, we the world understand, get out of this taboo, this social stigma of being a psychiatric patient and to just move away, just sell themselves away from other psychiatric patients and not to give them proper mental care, and proper, proper help like a caregiver, which they actually deserve. I hope you all, as the new generation doctors, you all will work together to get out of this social stigma. Thank you for the class today.